All right, what's going on? So I'm going to try to solve this problem, partition labels. I have not solved this problem as of yet, so it would be my first attempt. We'll see what happens. Change this to, oops. Let's see, a string as of logarithm is given. We want to partition the string into as many parts as possible so that each letter appears in at most one part and return a list of integers representing the size of these parts. Okay, so we have s, s is equal to the string, and we have output 978. The explanation, um, each letter appears in at most one part. So, we each, so okay, I see. So you have, uh, wait a second, any principles so that each letter appears in at most one part. So you can like, the partition is a, b, a, b, c, b, a, c, a. D E F E G D E, but like this is a partition so that each letter appears in at most one part. Each letter appears in at most one part. Oh, I think I see what they're saying now. Um, because it's split as into wait, this is these are not acceptable because it's split as into less parts. Yeah, I don't understand that. It says S will have the length and range of 1 to 500. S will consist of lowercase English letters from A to Z only. Um, okay, so we have A, B, A, B, C, B, A, C, A. Then we have this string here. <laughs> and then we have this string here. Uh, okay, so this string here. Uh, this string here it says each letter appears in at most one part. So I think in at most one part. So A appears at most in only one partition. That is, A doesn't appear in any other partition, just the first partition. B only appears in the first partition or first part. C only appears in the first part. D only appears in the second part. E, F, G only appear in the second part, H, I, J, K, L appear in the third part. Because it splits S into um, less parts. Um, I don't... Cause it, I guess you want to um, split into as many parts as, as possible. So, obviously you don't split into as many um, parts as possible here. Um, and we have a range of length from 1 to 500. Okay. So, I think a greedy approach would work, where, like, if you seem... No, a greedy approach won't work. Um, this is kind of weird. It's kind of like... You want it to be the case that if a character is in one of the strings, it shouldn't be in the other strings or other partitions. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I don't think I know how um, to solve this problem um, or how I would go about solving it. I mean, I'm trying to figure out, but yeah, because. Why do I, how far do I go? I know once I see an A, I keep counting, right? Oh, you know what? I think this would be some type of, um, um, some type of, maybe it's a prefix array problem where I would store, um, uh, like a a a list maybe um, a list that would have zero to twenty five for this indice value should be a, a list of length twenty six um, and initially everything is zero as in we have zero occurrences of these characters and then. What I could do is, as I iterate through it, I could increment them. So I could continue to increment, and then when we increment B, we're going to increment B. 
we're going to go to 2. Um, I don't know if this will work. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Um, and the only other idea that I had was to think about this in terms of of the characters and light and um, and um, I was thinking, <clears throat> can you break it up into like different bits? So, like I know A appears this many times, and I know that B appears this many times. So maybe I would say A here. It appears, I go one, two, three, four, so we get four occurrences. Hmm. <clears throat> I think there's, just, there's a couple ways to do it. I think I could keep it um, some type of count of the number of times each one occurs, and basically every time I see it in the string, I'm going to um, delete it. So once we go down to zero A's, what do we say? Or let's say we go down to zero B's, because it's going to happen first. So I was going to say, hey, we have zero B's. So yeah, so I might be thinking about this wrong, but what I'm thinking is the, the first B here, it's going to say that there's three B's, and then when it hits this B, because I'm going to subtract a B, it's going to be two B's. Here, when you subtract a B, it's going to be one B. Here, when you subtract a B, it's going to be zero B's. So it says, okay, I have zero B's, which means all the B's are contained in this part so far. So I would say the part is from where we started, which I guess was one to zero, one, two, three, four, five, to five. I would say I know that, that the part from one to five works for B. But then I would say, I need to keep track of what characters are inside of that segment. Um, so, for instance, A is inside of it. Well, A and C. So, yeah, so what would I do if A and C are contained inside of this this part? And I know that as I iterate through it, I maybe I'll, I'll have some type of... Um, hmm. I don't know what I would um, store for that. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm thinking that... <clears throat> hmm. This is actually kind of hard. I'm trying to think here. Nothing's coming to mind right now. Um, um, let's think here, let's think, how does this work? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think I know how to... Uh, approach this problem. Mm, maybe I should shut this down. Um, because uh, the issue. Oh man. So I need to like. Oops. I think A would be the first character I would keep track of though, because A is what I see first. So I would say A, then we go all the way to N, and I would say, okay, now A is zero. But once we go to the end where we say A is zero, I need to check that every other character that appeared in the part is also zero. So then I'd have to, I would say, keep some type of like data structure that stores the characters that I've seen 
until we reach zero and then I would say check if all those characters in that data structure are at um, zero um, I would say um, I would say the uh, the first one that's not at zero I would say keep iterating until it's zero and like keep moving your your J bigger and then so on so on um, yeah I think that's roughly one way to, to do it um, kind of a greedy algorithm and then you know we get we say okay they're all zero here so then I'm gonna pick up D go all the way till D is zero and then say okay well I need to pick up E go all the way until E is zero then I need to check is F zero is G zero um, and then, um, so time complexity of this, hmm, this might be what I'm thinking might be like pretty slow. Um, I might just plug in. So that's what I'm thinking right now. I was also thinking maybe that I could represent this as a graph, but I, I don't see that working. I don't know what a graph structure work here where like basically I would say the string a b gets map to it shares an edge in order for me to make a graph uh, there has to be some kind of relationship between the vertices and what would be, what would be my vertices would they be strings um, would they be counts of the number of occurrences of something um yeah i don't quite i'm not a hundred percent certain what the um optimal solution to a problem like that would be so <clears throat> I guess uh, try looking into it okay I think I'm gonna try this one approach how much time have I spent yeah, I spent like 13 minutes just pondering so I'm gonna try this approach I'll look at the hint Um, okay, before I use this hint, because I'm not sure what it means, um, let me just actually like do what the strategy that I think would work. <sighs> um, we'll keep track of the count too as we go through. So I'm gonna do so for um for uh, s and s i would say if s uh, mm, i would create a counter i would say count equals counter s Oh no. Alright, it's fine. Okay, and then so for S and S, um, what I'm thinking of doing is basically saying if S is equal, um, no. Um, yeah, well, let me think here. Mm -hmm. I would say if, yeah, so for, for the lower little S and big S, if, um, um if brief is a character then what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically say if brief and s equals prev then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep decrementing the count by one and then oops at the point once um, if count of s is equal to zero and that's the same thing that's the same thing as in Python the same thing as not count zero uh, s <clears throat> so if this is true then um, what I would want to do is if the count of s is zero then i want to keep track of uh, the previous characters uh kind of realize previous characters is going to have to be some type of like uh this thing 
And then what I'm going to do is, yeah, so I'm just going to add phase.addS for every time of iteration. Um, and I would say once we get to the point where the count is zero, I would say um, viz.remove s, we no longer need it. Um, I could use discard, discard's cool, discard s. And then <clears throat> what I could do is once we, once I, one, yeah, once we discard s, I could try, um, uh, let me think here, I could try something that would be clever and maybe I will, maybe I won't, we'll see. Um, hmm. Mm. Let me think, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, uh, so, I, so I discard from S, once I discard from S, I think I need to like um, while this, yeah, while this, <sighs> um, no, um, we'll say S, I don't know what to call it, S, T, and this, so these would be the other characters, we're going to see, um, if, um, this was the one thing to note here is that even though we're decimating the S, we're actually always going to decrement. So we're, we're always going to decrement it. Um, so actually, this doesn't matter. What matters is that um, if um, if not prev set prev equal to the current S. And then, so as we decrement s, we would say if not prev, we're gonna we're gonna discard prev, um, and then we're gonna check um, what's in our set, and basically, I would say while. While the count of st, yeah, while the count of st, we'll keep iterating through it. So we'll say um, s in, um, yeah. So basically, if I'm gonna go through this count st thing, and right now I have s and uh, I decrement it by one um, so what I can do is something maybe maybe I can do something so I say while count of st um, and basically um, I would hmm I don't know if it's going to be a count. Is it going to be a count of SC? It's going to be a count of SC, but it's also going to be, I'm going to have to continue iterating. Yeah, I don't think I came up with this good solution. Let's think about this. Try to greedily choose the smallest partition that includes the first letter. Okay. Try to greedily choose the smallest partition that includes the first letter. So let's say the first letter is A. So I say, okay, my smallest partition that includes the first letter is Wait, what? If you have something like A, B, A, C, C, B, then you might need to add B. A, B. So I say A, B. You can easily use a, a map. Like the last B was five to help you expand the width of your petition. So I need to keep an Oh darn it! I didn't think about that. Just keep the a mapping to the index value, the last index value for each character, and then if you just keep a mapping to the last index value, so like I keep mapping to the last A is here, the last B is here, the last C is here. So let's say. <sighs> So 
Let's see my first letter. Okay. So how do I do this? I'm gonna really don't really like the answer. Let's say answer equals uh, zero. And then let's say so the idea is to have this map called last. Um, and there's gonna be some type of like default dict with int. So we'll import default dict. And um, what I need to do is I need to iterate through. Yeah, yeah, okay, that is pretty easy for s and s. I don't even think I need a default dictionary. I could just use an array, I think. Well, I'll use a default dictionary and then I'll change it to an array. But yeah, I think an array will work too. Um, because an array, I just need to store the 26 characters in an array of size 26. Um, so yeah, so for S and big S, I would say um, what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get um, last S equals to I. That means that I need to, oops. That means I need to do that. So I'm just going to say the last s is equal i. So basically, last occurrence will be the last set value, and that would be the end of it. I could print out last and make sure that it's doing what I wanted to do, which I think it does. Um, yeah, so a gets mapped to a, b, c, d, four, five. Right. Okay, so then all I need to do is once I have that, I just need to oh, let me think here. Um, maybe I should keep the first as well. So I say. The first for this character is here. Uh, that's not what I want to do. I want to iterate through my list and then say um, the last is this thing. I don't. Darn it! I don't know how to for loop it though. Like I would do for loop for s and s, and I would say um, I could store. Partitions, I can make them as a set or something. And I can say for S and S, um, for S and S, we're going to get I equal to. This is kind of weird though, <laughs> because you kind of just want to jump around. So I think I'll use i. I'll say i equals 0, and I'll say while i is less than length of s, we're going to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set i equal, I'll say j is equal to last of s. Oops. Uh, I guess this is actually going to be si. So I'll say j is equal to last of si, and then I'll say when you're given something like that, you're going to want to um keep iterating for um for i and i oops um yeah so i think you just want to do this you're gonna have another while loop which is say while i is less than j you're gonna do this you're going to first off we're gonna to want to increment I by one, and then we're going to say um, we're going to update j to the last of s of whatever our current i is. We're going to keep incrementing i, and eventually i will go past this point. So, like for instance, I guess our last j will be five, so it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. No, j is going to go to five, so j will be a five. So, once i is at for it should be good, I think. So, yeah. Weird thing is that I think I have to increment it here. Um. Okay. So let me see. Go here. Um. Um. And then we also have this bit, and these bits as well. Um. Okay, so then here I would want to, um, let me see, what would I want to do? I would want to, so yeah, so I have i plus or equal to 1, and then down here what I could do 
is um, mm, tough problem here. Tough problem here. Make these, make these, make these in the bit. Yeah, because <clears throat> here I do this. So I, then I add it to my partitions, I think. Partitions dot add i. <laughs> so do that. And then I would say I keep doing this. And then I want to kind of print out what i is going to be equal to and print out what partition is going to be equal to at the end. What? Oh yeah. What just happened? What just happened? Okay, seven nine. Oh boy, this isn't what I want to see. Um, I do want to see seven nine. I don't know. I don't know what this is about though. Okay, I think I have to print out. What print out s of i here? Let's see what it does. Get a, we get c. I don't think we should get a c here. Yeah, it should give us a, and then here. S of J and then this should be it. I don't really care about that. So these are the S of J's. Okay, so we get A, right? And then we get B here. It says okay B. So it's gonna so it's gonna set J equal to whatever makes sense for B, which might be um, five, right? And then eventually, yeah, I think I see what the problem here is because J was greater here. So I think more like you want to return the max of J or um, this. Yeah. Yeah. That way you set J and then you update J if you get something larger. Uh, if you don't, I think you're good to go. Um, so like for instance here, we're going to get 888, and then we're going to get down here to 1515, and we're going to get 22. So at first it's like, okay, I'm going to go to 22, but then it sees this J and says, okay, now i got to go to 23. So then it goes that far, um, it adds it in to this thing, um, and... Um, it's one way to do it, and then I just have to turn the length of it. But I also think I could just increment the answer and then return an answer. <clears throat> and I don't think I need this. And we can update, we can fix that in a bit. Don't think I need this. Don't believe I need this. Okay, run code. Three is not a valid type for the expected return type. Wait, what's it expecting to return? Oh, you want to return something over this, the size of this. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't really understand what the return was. Okay, so the return is that. I didn't really even care about that. So, oh shit, my bad. Okay, yeah, so that's what you want to do. So in reality, I could just do this. I could just say equal to that way. I don't need that. That's stupid. <clears throat> okay, so then I'll just say, um, ret dot pen. I need to keep the start value, which would be the i that we start with, and then the end value would be that one. So then I'll just append n minus start. I think that works. Plus one probably. And then return red. 
Here we go. Ten, eight, no, okay, it's one greater. Okay, I guess I didn't need that. It's <clears throat> weird. Yeah, I mean, okay. Nine, seven, eight. Don't know if a magical order is in, but I'm gonna go with this right now. I'm actually going to, let's see, should I do another input? Uh, I could do this input. Here. Mm. Okay, what if I do something really silly like this? I mean, okay, let's think about it. The worst time complexity, this is linear, right? So I'm pretty sure, and the range of S is just 500. So I don't think I need to bother testing if it's whatever. Okay, it's accepted. It's accepted. So that's a cool solution. Uh, another thing I was thinking of doing was to like not even have to bother using this. Like literally, could just store this in an array and just say last equals um, I guess zero times twenty six. I wouldn't need this. And then um, instead of like storing it like this, we're gonna create um, we are going to use this character, but we're going to have to use the order of the character um, minus the order of of a. That way, <clears throat> and I'll print out last. Ooh. Print out last. So yeah, so if eight five, kind of like what I was expecting to see. Is A B C D E F G H I J K L. Okay, fair, fair, fair. So that's good. Then all we have to do is um, we need the order. Whoops, we need the order of the character and. Let me just copy paste. This would be the same thing. Yeah, there we go. Wait, what? What did I do? Oh, I'm missing this. Okay, so yeah, I think that's good right there. So this is good. This is good. Uh, I think this is good. I don't know. If, I think it's good. Let's just try. Let's index out of range. True. I would have to. I'm just gonna create the offset here, so I don't have to like do something like that. So I just do subtract this, and then subtract the offset, and then subtract the offset. There we go. Cool. It looks like it works. I don't know if it's gonna be faster. Or what's the case? Um, let's see, I can take a look at this. This is partition labels. Let's see, let's name of it. Go here, go to my submissions, compare these. Mm, that just takes more memory. Sure, so I guess default dictionary. I just want to use default dictionary. The only benefit to using an array is you don't have to use any, um, extra classes um i guess oh okay then they have some other questions merge interviews related topics yeah what are related topics two pointers greedy did i use a two pointer method i mean i use greedy Let's see so i have a pointer that points to the last and then i have a pointer that points to the to i yeah so it is two pointers i have a pointer that's pointing to like the last value and then i have this other pointer that's iterating through and once it equals that last value then you're going to set that as your end and you're going to subtract the beginning and the end um and yeah and then append it okay cool all right done 